Hello, and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabow. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Sandra Ingerman. We are really excited about this topic uh, because I think over the years, I know for sure spirits and um, interacting with spirits has certainly been an area of gray and concern for me. So we, we've gotten this great topic that Sandra's going to tell us about. Yeah. So um, one of the, the things about shamanic practice and um, and also I just want to appreciate, uh, send appreciation to um, the woman who sent in the suggestion for this topic. And so again, if you have questions um, or you would like to hear Renee and I talk about things about shamanism, um, please let us know. And if your topic is appropriate, um, we will definitely speak about this. And so one of our uh, wonderful listeners or watchers um, sent in a topic that I've actually um, been hearing people talk about for the 40 years of my teaching. So I was excited um, um, to see this question come up because you don't see people talking about it today. Um, in old time shamanism, um, shamans work with a variety of spirits. And um, I just the other day had an appointment with a practitioner who knows nothing about shamanism. And he said, yes, I work with the, an eagle, um, a bear, um, a snake, um, another animal, I can't remember what, and I work with the sun and the moon and the stars. And I said, you're a shaman. Um, that's what shamans do. They call in. He said, before I work, I call in um, these spirits. And he had no idea what shamanism was. And so the point is, is that in shamanism, we have a variety of spirits that we work with only because we're so interconnected with all of life. And so the question for this person was, I feel like I have too many helping spirits that I need to befriend and take care of and feed. And um, how do you set boundaries on all the uh, variety of spirits that might come into your life and when it starts to feel like it's too much for you? In the Wind Clan, we call that when it gets a little windy. <laughs> you know, like we, one of the things we've had to learn is that, or I had to learn for sure, was that I, if I call to a wind, then I send that wind home. And we do it on a monthly basis because we work on our prayer flags with a certain wind for a month. Because to me, the way you get to know whether that's a good helping spirit for you is to actually spend some time with, with that spirit long enough to find out like, well, what is the relationship? How does this energy come into my life and then send it home? But for me, the lesson was hard because one time I was at the psychic fair and, you know, in the days when I used to get some readings before I really knew that the winds had my back and I could go direct. And this, this woman said, what are all those spirits with you? <laughs> because you got about a good, like, you know, two or three dozen there, you know, two. <laughs> and I was like, and it occurred to me when she said that, that I was writing the book and that I was like adding another spirit, adding another spirit, adding another spirit. And so here they were, they were like, you know, full brigade behind me and I hadn't sent them home when I finished the chapter. Mm. And so I really had to learn the hard way and life got pretty, you know, pretty windy. And if so that's a good indication for you. If things are pretty windy in your life to look and see like, huh, who's here? Who's working with me? And maybe do I, you know, need to weed this out a little bit? Yeah, that, that's really interesting because um, how I learned um, shamanic journeying and again, I just learned from one person and then went on my own and, and learned from the spirits. And so I can't say that this person was the final authority on how shamans work around the world. But what I learned was that we have um, 
one to three main helping spirits who help us with um, the most important things in our life. And then we have spirits that are kind of around us who are more protective, but that we don't have um, uh, an ongoing relationship with. Um, so like in, in shamanism, um, one of the healing methods might be returning power from somebody uh, to somebody who's lost their power, who's suicidal, depressed, dealing with chronic illness, dealing with chronic misfortune. And you bring them back a helping spirit who will help to restore their power to help mm. them come back to their full health. And it doesn't mean that they're going to see that particular spirit again. Mm -hmm. It might be that the spirit is around them doing their job invisibly and there isn't a conscious relationship. So I know I have spirits around me who I don't have a conscious relationship with, but I have my main power animals and um, it still doesn't hurt to every once in a while do a journey, put out a thank you to all the spirits who are around me who are just protecting me, but I don't have a particular relationship with. So I think like what Renee is saying is if you are trying to have a personal relationship with too many spirits, you might need to send them home. Um, for me, it's just recognizing there's a lot of spirits around me who I have absolutely no conversation with, but they have some kind of role in my life protecting me and I just do a general thank you. Um, as I can from time to time. So, um, yeah, so it, it's all about where you're at. Are you getting too split working with all these spirits? I mean, for me, I have two spirits, one who works with my clients and one who um, talks to me about what to teach and what to write about. And they have two very specific tasks in their lives in my life. Um, and so you really have to think about um, what are all these spirits bringing into your life and do you need to just focus on main guardian spirits who are really helping you during this time. And I have my main guardian spirits as well. Um, this whole brigade of the wind spirits was like an added bonus. I think We've talked about it, but when I was when I was started to have these conversations with the wind, I thought it was a metaphor. I had no idea that, you know, these were individual energetics that could come in and and, and not come into my life, but that had been informing these communities throughout the world for, you know, eons. And I don't even know how how long because we only have the written word and, you know, the, the tablets and the cave markings. So we only know for as long as we know. But, you know, evolution tells us that, you know, the Big Bang or, you know, the breath of life that put us into motion was wind related. I mean, there was probably some other forces as well. But the ones that I'm using to work with others and learning how to heal and stuff is wind related. And we've actually started um, to use this particular wind spirits for tracking. And so, you know, you're, when you start to develop a really good working relationship with your, your spirits, you can, you can start to really refine and deepen your own skills. My friend Audrey used to always say, you know how you go to psychics and they're all, they, there's like a million of them and some of them you wouldn't sit down with, you know, you, you run by their booth as fast as you can. And they, because she said, you know, spirits are always looking for a host. You know, look at alcohol spirits are always looking for a, a vacant, a vacant person to host. And they, but the thing is, is, is are they in your highest and best good spirits? Or are they just somebody looking for an embodied, an embodiment of a moment or a time to, you know, play havoc. So I think this idea of really knowing 
like you do you know those two spirits you work with when you're doing healing boom and so you know i i think to really get those relationships honed out is really a crucial thing and you always remind me renee if there's no spirits there it's not shamanism because i like to stay in the practical let me run a business let me do this and you know the magic just is a nice added bonus in my life and you know so that stopped me in my tracks to see like who am i really working with hmm and, and so it makes me go deeper in my own in my own world and my own you know my own spiritual bubble right yeah i remember um back uh when was it it was it was pr probably in the 80s and early 90s everybody was a channel you know <laughs> channel. was channeling that was the big thing but um people were channeling murderers they were channel channeling <laughs> pirates um in shamanism, it's understood, and we've talked about this on different shows, that when you die, the belief is that you go to a transcendent realm. But there are times, and uh, we don't have that much time to talk about this, but um, I did really write it uh, with Hank Wesselman, a really good chapter on working with death and dying in awakening to the spirit world. And it's it's known in shamanism that um, spirits get stuck in the middle world uh, when they die. It could be because they were murdered and it was such a shock um, or there was a, a plane crash or um, a bus crash or war or um, a drug overdose or suicide, typically some kind of traumatic death. Not always, sometimes people get stuck who, um, who uh, look like they were gonna have a, a good death. And it's the role of the shaman to do what's called psychopomp work. Psychopomp means the leader of souls. Hermes was the great leader of souls. And so it's been the job of the shaman to do psychopomp work to move those stuck souls out of the middle world because the middle world is just a place for humans to evolve and learn. It's not a place for spirits to evolve and learn. Um, it's not their home. So, um, you know, back in the old days, everybody wanted to be a channel and they were just calling in any spirit. <laughs> I've watched shamanic teachers, really inexperienced shamanic teachers, get into huge trouble at their workshops. They pick up their rattle. One of the ceremonies that we do in shamanism before we start is calling in and welcoming the spirits. And they call in and welcome any spirit. And what I teach in my workshops is you only use the word helping and compassionate, period. Um, if you call in any spirits, any spirits will come. If you call in only helping and compassionate spirits, that's where you get the transcendent spirits. So the first thing everybody needs to do is make sure, am I working with a helping, compassionate spirit? Meaning they're not stuck in the middle world. They have transcended to the unseen realms and then if you're a person like who wrote in this topic where you would like to focus more on certain spirits you ask what is the role of this particular spirit in my my life and you either work with them or um you make some kind of agreement that you have too much going on in your life and you don't know how to take care and you need to set some boundaries. Um, and, you know, I'm a person like many people in shamanism, as many helping spirits as want to be around me at this particular time, I'm not sending anybody away, but they're also not requiring me, you know, I'm doing my work and I do have the spirits who I trust. I, being a little bit OCD, I get into uh, doing rose water on every sacred object in my house, which is a lot, but that's just me, you know, that's not a, a requirement. Um, and so 
there is a wonderful journey that I used to do in my beginning workshops, which I don't do anymore, and we could actually end with it if we want to, of, um, of how do I thank all the spirits that work for me, <laughs> that work on my behalf, because um, shamans do thank, they leave offerings, but it doesn't take their whole entire life, you know, they don't get overwhelmed by it and if you are getting overwhelmed by it then yeah you need to set some boundaries <laughs> yes and there's spirit time too which is different than our time like you know where whereas we think oh i've got to set up this whole big you know charade here and, and do this sometimes it's just that thank you okay you can go now and a long time ago uh, an ayurvedic doctor I was really being plagued by, you know, dreams and really, I sometimes I'll go into a real, you know, busy time in the dream work. Lately, a lot of people have been coming in my dreams. And he, he reminded me that I didn't have to, I didn't have to go out every single night, that I could say, listen, I am tired. I need my rest tonight. So, you know, thank you very much, but please, you know, please and thank you i'm gonna sleep yeah yeah and i think that's important for us to understand in the west that we don't have to do everything that the spirits ask of us and as renee was saying um if you feel like uh too much is going on in your life you're not feeling well um, you can't be a host for this spirit, um, for whatever reason, um, your own personal way of working is where you don't have too many spirits to work with. Um, and so you really have to look in your own life, what makes sense to you and, and letting the spirits know, I can't do what you're asking me to do right now. You're not in, um, you're not in, in real time with me. I've, I've shared this story and it, it has a point. And um, <laughs> um, Isis came to me once back in the 1990s when I was going through a traumatic event. And Isis used to come to me and, um, she she'll say to me you know what your problem is uh, you know <laughs> ask her anything she'll just start the conversation do you know what your problem is so this was one of those journeys do you know what your problem is and i said no what's my problem and she said you just don't see life as an adventure so i pointed out all the terrible things that i could see happening in my life and and the last one being um, a woman who grew up in new york we all have a genetic um, fear that's in our body that we're going to become um, a street a homeless um, a bag lady is a consciousness that women in at least in my time, women grew up with in New York of um, being afraid of being a bag lady. I actually <laughs> manifested it with all the bags I have for all my stuff for workshops. People say, you are a bag lady when they see how many bags I bring into my workshop. But anyway, I said to Isis, um, what happens if I become homeless in New York City? And she looks at me and she looks into the distance and she looks back at me and she goes, what a wonderful adventure that would be. <laughs> and I said to her, you don't have a body. <laughs> That's funny. If you don't have a body, yeah, what a wonderful adventure that would be. <laughs> yeah, my friend Anka actually, God rest her soul, was, did was on the street for a few days and 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 she it, it, she always talked about how it made her more resilient it mm -hmm. made her more appreciative of things as they started to regather into her life and you know what that's it was she had lost her she had lost a child oh. and she got so de despondent that she gave up on everything right and it wasn't until she was sitting on the bench in the park that that shift could happen 
so that she could realize that she was part of the living and that really wasn't her destiny. And, you know, she spent time rebuilding together. So that was a really important lesson. I mean, that, that bag lady um, ideology has never been one of mine. I'm just trying to think of like what, you know, what my greatest fear is. I think it was more about being famous. <laughs> I was never yeah. going to be famous enough. <laughs> ISIS never pushed me in that direction. But, well, um, you had that anyway. Look at, you know, it's like, what well, we resist, we persist type of thing. So, yeah, but again, the point she was trying, the point I was trying to make with her is she doesn't have, a, we, she doesn't have a body. Right. And it's something we have to understand is the spirits no longer have a body. So, they don't always, although we see them as all seeing, right? Um, they also don't always know what's correct for us on mm -hmm. a physical level. Like if you get an elephant as a power animal and you ask the elephant if you should have a baby, an elephant is naturally going to say yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, an elephant comes from a different mentality having a baby for you right now might not as a human might not be practical it might be practical if you were an elephant but it might not be practical if you're a human so although the spirits do have a completely different perspective they you also have to set boundaries as mm -hmm. a human being with them and i think that's a really important point and i think it's i know that we didn't answer everything that was um in this person's topic but um i think what renee and i both have agreed on is you do have to let the spirits know when it's time for them to go home uh, if you're not the appropriate person to work with and you need to set boundaries about what's possible for you and what's not possible for you so, right and before we go into the journey, one other thing is, is spirits, because they're not embodied, don't know the difference between a penny and a million dollars. So mm -hmm. if you just keep telling the spirits you need money, you know, they'll keep dropping pennies on your head. So you have to be pretty clear. And for that woman with, with her questions, we don't need to be overachievers with spirit. We don't need to have a spirit for this and a spirit for the spirit is everywhere. Right. You know, like that's that's what you know that's what animism is is that everything is alive with spirit so it's it's there for the enjoyment and for the you know the satiating uh luxury of it and like with, like you said sandra is one or two really is all you really need to develop that deeper working relationship with like i know that the wind has my back now, not every wind has my back per se. They might in some level, but there are certain winds of spirit in my book that I never pull out of the wind sack. And yet I'll see other people in the apprenticeship program or the, you know, the wind clan pulling them out all the time, like on a, on a monthly basis. So whereas Amunet might not come for me very often, Bang Popo and her tiger, because tiger is one of my power animals comes on a regular basis. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. Yeah, we do. We, um, we gravitate towards certain spirits and certain spirits gravitate towards us, I think. And, um, so we can do a short journey mm -hmm. and what the journey would be is, um, um, for those of you who are working with spirits um, and you don't, you've never asked this question, the very first question I have my students who uh, learn how to journey is the very, very first question I have people ask a spirit is, why are you coming into my life? What, what do you have to teach me? Um, and so if you've never done that, uh, you should, because it's important to know what the role of your spirits are in your life. Not that I just have a tiger, but why do I have a tiger? Why is the tiger coming into my life? What does it have to teach me? And, um, 
and and then um, ask your helping spirits how you can thank them. Mm. In a lot of ways, they're just spirits, and so <clears throat> they don't have bodies and they don't need to be thanked. But in shamanic cultures, dances and ceremonies were done just for the gratitude of what the spirits brought into their life. So even though they don't have bodies and can't relate if you wanted to give them a piece of clothing, um, they do relate to gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. They do get that um, you would like to work with them more. So um, what are ways that you can give gratitude? Like for myself, with my um, main helping spirit who does all my healings for me uh, on an occasional basis, I just bring um, a picnic basket um, down to the lower world and I don't ask him for anything and we just have a picnic together. Mm. So, you know, these could be simple things. So why did your particular spirits come into your life and how can you um, thank them? Um, for being in your life and you might in this journey look at who you need to set a boundary with and say as Renee would say um, it's time for you to go home mm -hmm. so, um, okay that's so, exciting I'm looking forward to this one yeah so if anybody has a drum or a rattle and they want a drum and rattle with me uh, go for it and basically you don't really have to go anywhere for this journey you just want to take some deep cleansing breaths and start to put out a call from your heart not from your mind but from your heart. What helping spirits, what helping and compassionate transcendent spirits are bringing help into my life right now? And when you experience a spirit coming into your space, ask it what role it has life right now. goodbye to those helping spirits that you're talking to right now knowing that you'll see them again and they'll be with you for your life so let's all together give thanks to all the helping spirits who are working with us and helping us in our own lives and sharing ways of how we can make life on Earth better for all of life on Earth, not just for ourselves.
Hi there. <laughs> that was great. That was very simple and very profound. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that um, when I teach people, I, I teach people make it as simple as you possibly can. <laughs> um, and you'll find that your practice will grow much deeper from staying simple. So, yeah. My spirit was hungry. I had a, I had a, uh, send it some um, imaginary um, meat. Yeah. It was very hungry. And then some fish and some more meat. And it was like, I guess I hadn't fed my spirit in a long time. So I'm sorry about that. And please forgive me. And, and I will do much better in the future. So thanks for that great reminder. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really simple to just give thanks to all the help that you're receiving. And um, those of you who feel overwhelmed, um, again, it's your right to say to the spirits because um, uh, they're not completely seeing what you're capable of. Um, it's your right to say to the spirits, um, it is time for you to take your, your leave. Um, but if you're like me, um, just allow the spirits to come and circle you with protection and love and just to give gratitude when you can. So that was really wonderful. And, and for those of you who are at home, you know, we had this conversation and it's kind of like an ongoing conversation between friends and we really enjoy our time together. And I hope, well, based by your feedback on our YouTube channel and our emails, you really enjoy our conversational style. And we do love when you send in great ideas for topics and subscribe and, and share with your friends. And that's what keeps us going. And even the people who send us, we have some pretty regular donors who, who are on their regular list. So if you really enjoy the show, feel free to, you know, send us a gift towards production costs. And we're here to, we're here to serve. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us. Um, Renee and I really enjoy talking to each other, but it's been wonderful to have a focus to be able to talk to all of you. And um, we're all walking together during these challenging times. And so let's think of ourselves as a supportive community that loves each other and comes back just to share a little bit of love every week during our show. So thank you for joining us. Blessings. Mm -hmm.